Vincent van Gogh, a melancholy and largely self-taught artist, was a leader of the post-impressionist art movement. Although, during his lifetime, he remained mostly unknown and poor, Van Gogh was regarded as one of the greatest Dutch painters alongside Rembrandt. His use of vivid colors and emotions, such as introspection, combined with his unique brushstrokes, changed the way people paint and expanded what art was and is capable of. Vincent's brilliant artistry made him the subject of contempt by Adolf Hitler during World War II. In the late 1930s, Hitler ordered thousands of works of art that he deemed degenerate to be rounded up and burned. It is believed that six works by Van Gogh, including one of his most famous self-portraits, Painter on the Road to Tarascon, were burned in a bonfire. Though Vincent Van Gogh's original masterpiece was destroyed during World War II, his influence on the art world could not be eradicated. Vincent Willem van Gogh was born on March 30, 1853, in the small town of Groot Zandert in the Netherlands, to Pastor Theodorus van Gogh and a moody artist named Anna Cornelia Carbonus. Anna had a deep love for art and nature, something that she instilled into Vincent and his younger siblings. Vincent was born exactly one year to the day after his parents' first, whose name was also Vincent, was stillborn. The somewhat haunting reality of Vincent seeing his name and birthday on his stillborn sibling's headstone is speculated to have caused him a great deal of the existentialist angst that plagued him throughout his life. The early years of Vincent's life are largely unknown. However, he has been described as a quiet child who displayed little, if any, interest in artistic endeavors. At the age of 15, his upper middle class family had encountered financial hardship. Vincent was required to drop out of school and begin working. His first job was at his uncle's art dealership, who sold paintings to the Hog. Five years later, Van Gogh was transferred to the Goupil Gallery in London. After many ups and downs, Van Gogh decided to move to Brussels and become an artist. Before this time, Van Gogh had never received any formal art training. During his time in Brussels, his younger brother Theo offered to support him. Theo's lifelong financial support of Vincent allowed him to devote his entire life to painting. In 1885, at the age of 32, Van Gogh began work on his fi first true piece, Potato Eaters. With the exception of a few minor brushstroke changes, he finished the masterpiece, depicting peasants sitting around a table at nighttime within two short months. Shortly after completing Potato Eaters, he moved to Paris with his younger brother, Theo, a successful art dealer who had a great influence on Vincent's career. During his stay in Paris, Van Gogh became inspired by what he saw. He took great influence to the lighting and moods. In July of 1888, Van Gogh began work on what would become known as one of his greatest pieces, The Painter on the Road to Tarascon. Vincent drew the painting as a self-portrait, portraying himself walking through a field on a bright day. Van Gogh painted himself carrying his art supplies and walked hunched over, conveying that he was tired or down about something. Although the painting is infused with light, Van Gogh painted his shadow into the portrait. The scraggly shadow conveys to me that Van Gogh had issues, whether they were emotional or physical, or possibly both, and he knew that they were somewhat obvious on the outside, but didn't truly want to admit them. The clothes that Van Gogh has painted himself wearing were very basic and scraggly, reflecting his modest lifestyle. He painted what he loved, his life of being on a journey to paint how he felt about not only his interior life, but how he felt about the world around him. The painting evokes to me the emotion of a loner, it also conveys a time of contempt in Van Gogh's life, showing him on the road to work to make his living. Imagine going against societal norms and mores in pursuit of something deep within you that called to you a higher ideal. Vincent Van Gogh went against the status quo of his fellow artists in the last quarter of the 19th century. As other painters worked on the techniques of capturing the world as seen by the naked eye, Vincent Van Gogh reached and tapped into his own emotion and let his fuel his passion for painting. He mastered the art of using color to capture mood rather than capturing the world around him as it realistically appeared. He painted approximately 30 self-portraits in the span of three years. It was Hitler's mission to wipe out races and peoples that he deemed inferior. He was greedy and power hungry. Hitler was angry at the fact that he had been denied entry to art school and felt that he had something to prove to the world. Because Vincent van Gogh was not a German or part of the Aryan race, his paintings were deemed degenerate and confiscated by the Nazis. One of these paintings happened to be Painter on the Road to Tarascon. A few of the finest examples of degenerate art Hitler would keep for himself in his homes. Painter on the Road to Tarascon was cho not chosen for Hitler's private collection. 
one of Van Gogh's self-portraits was put into a degenerate art gallery in Manberg, Germany, in the Kaiser Frederick Museum. Hiller would attempt to make these galleries as ugly as possible by hanging paintings up with wires and decorating the gallery with very bland and very bland colors. It is believed by many art historians that painting on the road to Tarascon was destroyed in a fire when the Allies bombed Magdeburg. While it wasn't necessarily intentional, the painting is still gone and most likely would have been destroyed by the Nazis had the Allies not done it first. The loss of such a great painting was a huge blow to the art world. Years of Van Gogh's experience and work had just been lost in a few short moments. The loss of just one painting isn't the greatest of crimes, although one is still destroying another person's work simply because they disagree with them personally. The greater crime is attempting to eradicate an entire group of people's work in an effort to cleanse, to destroy years of progress and techniques is simply cruel. During the Nazis' reign, it is estimated that over 22,000 works of art were stolen or destroyed. That doesn't take into account the amount of books or other types of literature also stolen. By attempting to destroy all of these works of art, Hitler was not only trying to eradicate a group of people, but permanently erase them from history. He was not only unsuccessful at his attempt to eradicate a race of people, but he was also unsuccessful at eradicating Van Gogh's legacy to the art world. In fact, his efforts may have been fueled the passion of future generations of artists to use and improve upon the art techniques of Van Gogh. Van Gogh's use of vivid color, notable brushstrokes, and infusing subjective emotion into works of art is something that artists have been using for many years since. Why should we care? Well, without art, we would have nothing to learn about past cultures. The amount of knowledge we have gained from architecture, literature, painting, and past actors is absolutely astounding. Without history, there would be no progress in these fields.